Okay, this is demo to show uh, how to analyze flow cytometer data. So on Moodle, there is a template uh, file. It's in a zip format. You download that file, expand it, and in that file, uh, in that zip file, you will see uh, two files. One is called fcs.zip. Uh, the other file is a template R code called BioWin25 flow set plot 2005-04-20.r. And <clears throat> so you want to uh, unzip the fcs.zip, and then it will bring you to a folder called fcs. Uh, initially, that folder contains only uh, five files, no pi, vector hu uh, plus minus, wild type hu plus minus. And but you can download your own uh, flow cytometer data from the shared uh, Google Drive. The link is on the uh, link is in the article here. So that link point to a shared Google Drive. You can download your uh, flow cytometer data. Once you download uh, uh, those uh, zip the flow cytometer data, you can select your own section data, put it into the FCS folder. That's how your data will be analyzed with the wild type and vector control. So once we have that, go back to the R Studio. Uh, if you have not installed the R package, you should install this package by uncomment uh, those lines in front of it. Uh, I have installed those on my own computer, so I will just load them uh, into uh, there. I have it. at the bottom. You see those has been loaded into R. So, and um, we need to tell the R uh, where to find those flow cytometer data. So I, I'm setting the working path. You go to FCS, and then the next line will read all the FCS data into R. This uh, take a, a minute or so. This is because once you go to the FCS folder, you will see each flow cytometer data is a few mega megabytes. So it's actually quite large. Uh, each one, uh, 5 meg, 5 meg, 8 meg, 7 meg. It's actually quite large file. Uh, and once we read into the R, and uh, we need to transform the flow cytometer signal. Uh, in this case, I'm doing a log 10 transformation. Um, and then I apply the log 10 transformation to the FS, which is a flow cytometer data. That's basically just to perform a transformation. And then the flow cytometer data is a uh, flow cytometer is a very sensitive. It measures many debris in the water. Uh, dust in the water, debris in the water, those are all going to be measured. So we, we select a gate, pick only each cell to analyze. So the way we pick the each cell is to use FCH uh, forward scanning uh, and side scanning. Side scattering. Uh, forward scattering is basically proportional to cell size. And we pick greater than 2 and less than uh, 10,000. That's basically for east cell size. And then we use uh, side scattering. That side scattering is kind of a, uh, proportional to the complexity of the cell. OK, so we pick that gate and then up generate a future applied to the data set. Uh, you can see other, you can see uh, here uh, the red uh, means it's running. Uh, this actually is kind of a counting once it is, uh, the stop sign disappeared it means the running has stopped. Uh, you can actually see what's the flow cytometer data we have now. It have a non-experiment. There'll be five control and four data set right now. Let's be here. So we have a four wild type and vector and a no PI and a four data, four data. That's the uh, non-experiment. And there are those column basically channels in flow cytometer. The forward scattering, side scattering, channel one, two, three. And there are a few others uh, we can ignore it for now. So it turns out the 
for protein iodine, the color can be seen in both channel 2 and 3. Channel 1, uh, we, we don't use that for protein iodine. So it's actually, uh, if you want to uh, uh, generate, analyze the data, generate a plot, in R we can generate a PDF file. So basically this command say PDF, file name, uh, six inch wide and uh, four inch height. And then we can have a, well if you don't like six inch, you can change, change to eight inch wide and six inch tall height. And device all basically turn off the PDF. The first plot is called density plot. If you want to see what it, what it does, you can just run that two line directly, you will see the plot in, inside of R, excuse me. But this is not uh, saved in a figure. You can you can pick it, uh, in the figure, you can save it a plot or save the uh, image. But we can also directly generate a PDF. Um, so um, I will just highlight those lines and run it to actually generate all those uh, PDF plot in the PDF file directly. But you can also run those uh, inside of R to see. For example, here, oh, it's already done. And I go back to uh, directory, you will see here, that's the plot. Um, you can, let's open that PDF file, you will see the, that's the channel two uh, histogram plot. Uh, at the bottom, those are the log 10 scale. So the first one means 10, two means 100, three means 1,000, four means 10,000. So the wild type HU plus minus is green and uh, brown. Vector HU is red and purple. HU plus, red for HU plus, purple for HU minus. And groups, uh, section three, group A HU plus is this blue one and there's uh, uh, bluish green is uh, HU minus, and then there's the section one group three. Oh, I'm not sure group three is about. Uh, is the green and the, the brown one, and there is no PI. So without any staining, cell still has some background signal. That's a background. So. Uh, with propylene iodine, uh, majority of the signal is here. Uh, it's uh, the it turns out in our experiment though we ask you to use water to store the cell. It looks in retrospect water is not the best choice because water has the same effect as hydroxyurea. So in a way, HU plus minus look similar because water has the same effect as hydroxyurea. Water basically synchronize cell, arrest the cell in G1 phase. So after uh, next year, if, if we want to uh, eliminate this water effect, we should ask you to treat with hydroxyurea and then leave, leave the the HU minus uh, treatment in uh, growth medium, not in water. Because water basically has the same effect as hydroxyurea. So, so this year, we, after we run the experiment, we realized HU plus minus, they look almost similar. Because, because water has the same effect as hydroxyurea. So HU minus plus water is become the same. They are all that's uh, unfortunately that's a bad experimental design on uh, our side. Uh, but once I look at the flow cytometer data, I realize oh, <laughs> yeah, oh I I I actually still recording so far. Okay, uh, but that uh, tells you how we can use data analysis to read uh, to find out how to uh, uh, interpret the experimental data. But if you look at this one, vector HU plus and HU. Uh, actually minus compared to white, you do see something different here. So the vector seem to have an extra peak on the left. Uh, it's the, uh, our current interpretation is maybe that is a G1 phase. And all the wild type uh, shifted to the S phase. Uh, 
those are in between. So it, we, we let you to grow in the gross media up for one and a half hour. Maybe that's good enough to shift all the uh, G1 arrested cell into S phase. But uh, the vector one still have a lot of uh, G1 arrest there. So, but we need actually much more experiment to confirm that interpretation. It still remains as a conjecture or a hypothesis at the moment. But uh, okay, that's the, what I have right now. <laughs>